Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture for this week. We are covering the endocrine, metabolic, immunology, blood, mental, nervous, and circulatory system. I try to keep these lectures short, 15 minutes or less are really ideal. So I may not get through circulatory, but I just wanted to um, go through a few practice cases and a few highlights. So let's get started with diabetes. So diabetes mellitus, right, is a metabolic disease in which the pancreas does not produce insulin normally. There's a hereditary and non-hereditary, right? We've all heard of type one or type two, insulin dependent, non-insulin dependent. So when we're coding, we sometimes want to look at laboratory findings, but we are not a clinician, so we cannot diagnose off a lab right? Um, but you will see elevated blood sugars on glucose tolerance tests if they're over 160 out of 100 milliliters of blood after one hour after a meal or 120 out of 100 um, two hours after a meal. So the normal range is 115 to 130. So those glucose tolerance tests or lab findings are helpful when you're coding. There's also glycosuria, which is when the patient has sugars in their urine specimen, right? Sugars in the blood, or sorry, in the urine. And so when we're coding diabetes, we need to know the type. Um, so we have a non-insulin dependent or insulin dependent. And we sometimes will know if it's controlled or not controlled poorly controlled, sometimes the physician will say. So years ago, we used to be able to say that type one was insulin dependent and type two was non-insulin dependent. But diabetes has really changed over the years with more juveniles getting type two. Historically, juveniles had type one, but we are seeing um, rates of type um, two diabetes in juveniles. So we can't just say, juvenile, non-juvenile, it's um, insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent. So when you're coding diabetes, what you wanna watch for after you determine if it's insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent, if you can, and if you don't know, the unspecified is the default, which is the same as non-insulin dependent. So when we're coding uh, complications of diabetes, you wanna look for renal manifestations, ophthalmic or eye manifestations, neurological, peripheral, circulatory, and there's other specified ones in your book too. And my example here is really small. Sorry, you guys probably can't even see that. So one example that I um, have here um, is uh, insulin dependent diabetic, so DM, diabetes mellitus, with peripheral circulatory. So a patient may develop several complications due to diabetes, right? It might not just stop at the circulatory system. Maybe they have a renal failure or maybe they have an ophthalmic like retina problem. So you want to make sure and read the entire medical record, right? The entire chart to see if there's more than one complication. And just for fun later after our lecture, go to diabetes and just look at all the different complications. So I wanted to do a case um, and I got some great feedback that maybe we should have more than just a couple cases or one case actually. So I put a few in here. So let's do this first one. We have a diabetic polyneuropathy in a patient who has also peripheral angiopathy due to type one insulin dependent diabetes. So I'll give you like 30 seconds. Um, I wanna get through all the slides if we can in that the 15 minute time frame. Okay, so hopefully you guys have two different codes. We would code the diabetes type one with polyneuropathy, and that's E1042. And then if we went to diabetes type one with peripheral angiopathy, we would get our second code, which is E10.51.
So also in this unit, we have diseases of the blood. And obviously I can't discuss all of them, but I just wanted to, to talk about some common ones. Anemias are probably one of the most common you will see. So anemia is when we have a decrease in the number of erythrocytes or red blood cells, the quantity of hemoglobin or the volume of packed red cells in the blood. And there's different deficiencies in anemia, like iron deficiency, there's vitamin, nutritional deficiency, chronic blood loss. Then there's also a hemolytic type of anemia, and that's an abnormal reduction of red blood cells caused by an increased rate of red blood cell destruction and disability of the bone marrow to compensate. And some examples of that type of anemia is sickle cell anemia or thalassemia. And then we also have a plastic anemia, which is caused by abnormal reduction of red blood cells due to a lack of bone marrow blood production. So when you're coding anemias, they're all grouped under the main term anemia, but you still wanna know what you're coding. We also might see coagulation defects where there's a breakdown in the, the clotting process of the injured tissue. This can be congenital or this can be attributed to um, someone who say had a heart issue and is now on um, Coumadin and has a clotting um, factor disability from that. So it can be something medicinal. We also have purpura and other hemorrhagic conditions, like if somebody has a platelet defect like thrombocytopenia, that's something you might code. So let's do an example of a blood disorder. So in this scenario, we have a 47-year-old who was seen for fatigue after work up, it was determined she was suffering from iron deficiency anemia. So again, I'll give you just like 30 seconds and then I'll go over the answer. Hopefully you all, <clears throat> all found D 50.9 which is iron deficiency anemia. And to find it, you would go to your index, to anemia, then to iron deficiency. Now remember, you always verify the code you found in the alphabetical index in the tabular list. So you would then go to D50.9 <clears throat> and make sure there's nothing special to do with that. Okay, mental disorders. So, we have a book just used to code mental disorders. It, it's now in the fifth edition. It's called the DSM, or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It used to be in the fourth edition. Now we're in the fifth edition. So the DSM-4 is similar to your ICD-10 CM book in the fact that it has your ICD-10 codes for mental disorders, but it also has other information for clinicians. Um, it has the diagnoses, treatment options, stages, those kinds of axes. They have different axes that they'll um, grade the diagnosis on. So if you ever were to work for, say, a mental health counselor or behavioral health clinic, at like a state um, mental health facility, those kinds of facilities might have a DSM-5 which would be a great resource to a coder as well. But just a, a clinical um, psychologist or psychiatrist might have one in his or her office if you ever got a coding position there as well. So let's do a practice from mental health. This scenario is a 54-year-old patient who comes in today. Dr. Payne diagnosed him with a, mono, a monopolar mood disorder, manic episode without psychotic symptoms. So that's kind of a mouthful to say. Um, and to, so to look it up, I'll give you again like 30 seconds.
Okay, hopefully you guys all have the code F30.10. And there's different ways you could actually look up this code. I went to mania and then disorder, mood, and then manic. And under that, you can pick episode without psychotic symptoms. Now, let me go back to the scenario. Um, most of the time, the doctor's not gonna tell you with psychotic symptoms or without psychotic symptoms. It would list if there were additional psychotic symptoms, um, suicidal ideation or whatever it might be. But if there's nothing listed, then you would select without. Okay, but in this scenario, I just wanted to put it in there so that you could get to the correct code. So our code again is F30.10. I went to mania, but you could also go to disorder mood. So there's more ways to look this one up. Now on to the nervous system. The nervous system, we have lots of different conditions, but any condition that affects the brain, spinal cord, or peripheral nervous system. Then we also have um, sense organs on the next slide, which those are gonna cover anything of the eye, adnexal ear, and mastoid. So some common ones I just wanted to pull out, meningitis, hemiplegia or hemoparesis, and epilepsy. Um, I won't go through all of these, but just know that sometimes you might need two codes if there's um, under meningitis, for example, if there's a bracket or italics in the index, that means you need both codes. Remember from the very beginning of class, if you see those brackets or um, italics in the index with two codes, that's two codes required. One usually for the condition and then one for the causative organism that caused the condition. So if we wanna look up meningitis, for example, take out your book and go to meningitis. And then if we scroll down to just go um, under H influenza, it says in, and then due to adenovirus and then African trypanosomiasis, you'll see there's two codes there, B56.9 and then there's the brackets, GO2. So that means you need both. So you would look up both in the index to verify and see if additional digits are needed. Um, two more down, bacterial disease, same thing. A48.8 and GO1. So anytime you see the two codes, one in parentheses or brackets, italics, you need both. And you keep them in the sequence that it tells you in the index as well. So sense organs, um, some disorders that are very common are ear disorders like swimmer's ear, which is otitis externa, or otitis media, which is inflammation of the middle ear. When we're coding, we need to know the type of it, it like supportive, non-supportive, for example, acute versus chronic. So here is our last practice. Um, so in this example, we have a two-year-old who's seen in the clinic today for acute non-supportive otitis media in the right ear. So I'll give you again like 30 seconds and let me know the code you got. Okay, hopefully everyone has H65.191. So when we're coding this one, I went to otitis, media, and then under that you want to pick non-supportive, acute, or subacute is what it says, and it gives us H65.19, but that hyphen means that we need to look for an additional digit, right? So once you go to the tabular at H65.19, we see the right ear has the one. So that's where I get the code H65.191. Okay, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you found these cases helpful.